very proud to say that um, we cover issues here on Sun News that other people simply won't touch because they're, well, they're, they're too frightened to. And when it comes to Islamic radicalism, uh, I think we're pretty much, yes, I would say we're better than anyone else on TV at objectively, intelligently, in an informed, balanced manner, naming the guys who should be exposed, but also defending those who are worthy of defense. And by the way, those who need defending, the vast majority are Muslims who simply do not want to hurt other people. They're the prime victims of, of the, the fundamentalists. Lars Hedegaard is a, a journalist in Scandinavia who has a newspaper. He's an activist, a speaker. He's done wonderful work in exposing Islamic radicalism. And for that, there was an attempt to murder him uh, just a few weeks ago now. He's in Washington at this point. Welcome to you, Lars. Thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure. I mean, we had you on the show twice when you, well, the police were with you in, in, in Denmark, making sure that you were safe. That you're in Washington, mm. does, does that mean that the situation is better now? I don't really know. Uh, my, my circumstances have changed, and uh, they're not the same as before, but uh, whether or not I'm safer than I was a few weeks ago, I don't really know, but uh, I try to live a life as freely as I can. Mm -hmm. I know you can't answer all of these questions, so forgive me if, if, if they're crass, but were the police happy with you leaving the country? Oh, yes. They were okay with that? They, they didn't say, for goodness sake, don't do this, we can't give you protection in another country? No, 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 they did not. No, they didn't, no. So I presume I'm safe. Right. What about in the States? Again, you might have a better answer, but are you given any particular protection? Let's not talk about that, okay. uh, not to give people ideas. All right. No, I fully understand. Um, for those who didn't see the previous, the earlier interviews, there were, a man came to, to his door with a gun and tried to shoot you in the head. He was incompetent, thank God, and, 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 and he failed. Uh, he also failed, and this is, I think, extraordinarily important, to stop you or to silence you, because often fear can silence people. I would, am I right in saying you are more active and perhaps angry than you were before. I'm about as, as active as I was before, but uh, I'm more angry, I would say. Yeah. I'm angry that somebody comes to my country, uh, uninvited, I suppose, and, and uh, decides to bump me off. Uh, yes, I'm angry. I think uh, he ought to behave, and I think uh, people of that sort do not belong in my country. Mm -hmm. Now, w when we spoke the first time, y your, your situation had been reported on, but very few people were speaking up for you. I know some have come forward since then to champion you, but have enough journalists, have enough people who routinely live by freedom of speech come forward to say this man must be defended, what he stands for has to be defended? Well, you can, dis you can uh, certainly have opinions on that, but I, I, on the whole, I'd say that I'm satisfied with the, uh, uh, the backing I've received. Uh, from very important people, uh, not only in Denmark and Europe, but also uh, over here in Canada and the US. Uh, I won't mention names, but uh, I, I'm pretty, pretty happy with the uh, support I've got. Good. Let's talk about the nature of Islam here, because th this is where, I think this is the quintessence of this argument. There, there will always be within any religion or ideology, a lunatic who will try to stop you speaking out in, in a contrary manner. But in most religions and most ideologies, we're talking about one or two eccentric, extreme people. That doesn't seem to be the case in Islam. It's not the majority of Muslims, but there is a mindset, even within mainstream Islam, that simply doesn't understand contrary opinion. I've been to demonstrations where no one's trying to kill me, but they say, you shouldn't be allowed to say that. There should be a law to stop you saying that. Well, it's, that, it's not that much further from there should be a law to actually try and physically to stop you. Is it within the nature of Islam to prevent free speech? Yes, I'm afraid it is. Um, what you have to remember is that, uh, or re let me refer you to what uh, Yusuf al-Karadawi, the headman of the uh, Muslim Brotherhood said on Egyptian television just a few weeks ago. He said that Islam could not have survived till this day unless they had applied the Sharia law for uh, apostasy, which really means that they have systematically killed everyone 
who has stood up against uh, Islam over 1400 years. So this is no surprise to me. And also, um, what, what they are trying to show by this uh, targeted killing is that anyone who stands up and criticizes uh, Islam is fair game. It's uh, like Mao said, kill one and frighten thousands. Mm. Uh, and, and that's how I look at it. The problem, though, is that, and you know this better than I do, we're in a minority. We're prepared to embrace this. But there are many out there who are frightened to. I don't mean physically frightened. Some of them, they're intellectually nervous of, of making such a claim because they think they'll be accused of, of Islamophobia or racism. So they're relativists. They'll say, well, all religions, are, they're all pretty much the same. But they know that isn't true in their heart of hearts. They know that isn't true. So can Europe and North America, with its pluralism and diversity, can it continue to exist with an increasingly triumphalist and large Islamic minority? No, it can't, unless, unless uh, people start treating um, Islam as they would treat any political ideology. Uh, you can freely criticize and ridicule uh, Democrats, Republicans, uh, socialists, communists, and, and, and whatnot. Unless you can also do the same uh, with Islam, uh, then you cannot, uh, you cannot maintain your freedom. It's as simple as that. If you, if you give uh, certain rights and prerogatives to uh, one particular ideology, then, of course, that ideology is going to be victorious, yeah. especially if it's prepared to use uh, violence and deadly violence uh, to further its cause. I have a feeling you're going to be back on the show. In a way, I'd, I'd like to say you, there will be no need, but I think, I know there will be a need. Thank you so much for what you do. Thank goodness you're still here. It's a great pleasure, my friend. Thank you. Have a